If you've already made the decision to get your MBA, there are some things that I would recommend you consider for which is the right program for you. And those might be how reputable is a certain school with the types of companies you would like to get in with. So essentially, the recruiters who have good relationships with the school that you're considering. And, um, ult and another consideration is what's the academic rigor of the program? Um, there's a lot of schools that have great um, reputations for being quantitative. Some schools have great reputations for being more marketing focused. Some schools have great, great reputation for being more operations and strategy focused. Um, some are just general management schools. And I think those are all um, the types of classes you'll be exposed to is a good indication of the type of uh, focus that they put into their program and what you would hope to get, into, uh, get out of the program once you select uh, that school. So I also think, most importantly, it's the overall fit of the school. Because when you choose what school to go to, there are hundreds of other students in the same position as you are right now who are also choosing that same school. And if you think that it fits you personally, it's likely you'll find like-minded other students in your class who've also made the same decision. Between my first and second year, I did my internship with AEG, which is Anschutz Entertainment Group. You may not know their name, but they are basically the parent company behind a lot of sports and entertainment um, franchises. So the Los Angeles Kings, the Staples Center, the Nokia Theater in New York, uh, the New York Red Bull soccer team. Those are all examples of AEG enterprises. And what my internship was with them, uh, they're based in Los Angeles, I essentially did database marketing. And although it doesn't sound very sexy, keep in mind I came from a sales background. So I didn't have any exposure in my previous line of work, and I wanted to get into um, marketing and strategy post-business school. So this was a great way for me to make that transition. And uh, some of the cool projects I did, uh, obviously they were a sports entertainment company, so the data I was analyzing was ticket sales and event surveys. And so, you know, it's a lot uh, more interesting, I guess you would say, than some of the plain focus groups around uh, consumer packaged goods or other types of products that might not be as interesting as sports and entertainment. And ultimately what I was able to do with my internship was create some recommendations based on doing some analysis of the survey data and the ticket sales data to help inform management of what types of um, initiatives they could include in future events. And these events included things like the New Orleans Jazz Fest, um, the Adidas Track and Field event, the uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Tennis Open. So that was a great experience for me to try to come up with um, some recommendations for these, uh, these events that were related to AEG's initiatives. Prior to UCLA, I was working in the hotel, hospitality, meetings and conventions industry as a sales manager. And knowing I wanted to transition into a more traditional business field, I was successfully able to transition into a sales operations and strategy role at Google. Uh, initially, I was hired in a client-facing role, so I had client accounts that I helped manage. Uh, I helped manage their advertising campaigns on Google properties. And over time, you know, me now having been here for six years, I've been able to work in three different teams, going from a sales role into a more operations and strategy role, and into now a, an even larger umbrella operations and strategy role where I support all of North America across all of Google's properties. So I'm uh, very happy that UCLA has given me the right, um, the right connection to alumni who are in the field, the right connection to um, the, class, the classes that, that helped me make the transition um, the, with the academic rigor that a company like Google expects. Um, and so I'm very fortunate that all the stars have aligned for me and I'm very happy that UCLA Anderson was my choice and I'm very happy with that. My first year at UCLA Anderson, there were 330 uh, students in my class. Additionally, there were 330 students in the class uh, above me, the class of 2005, and another 330 students in the class below me, the class of 2007. So I had exposure to over a thousand people during my two years at UCLA Anderson that I could consider my classmates and hopefully I could call on them uh, you know five ten years down the line if this uh, if a need arose if, if there was a need that came up that I might need to reach out to them 
or likewise, if, if they were found themselves in a situation, they want to reach out to me. And I think that having such a large network of students while you're on campus is important. Um, most importantly, you don't know what career paths your um, fellow students are going to take. And they could be uh, well positioned to help you later down um, in your career with things like um, prepping for um, large meetings. Maybe you want to research a certain industry or a certain client and you have a colleague or an old classmate who now works at that company. They might be a great resource for some uh, deeper information that you might not stumble across on your own. Or if you're maybe looking to make a career change yourself and you're looking to prepare for an interview or um, maybe you're doing an analysis for your own company and um, you have a, a colleague who can help you with that analysis. So these are all examples of how your classmates, um, not only in the two years you're there, but over your lifetime are going to be able to give you value. Uh, of course, there's a flip side to that, and that flip side is that you yourself hopefully will be open and willing to share with your classmates if they ever turn to you. So the network is definitely a two-way dialogue. It, uh, it needs um, people to participate on both sides uh, from both people looking to get assistance and people willing to give assistance. While I was at UCLA Anderson, I was one of the social chairs. Uh, essentially, I helped plan fun events. And one of the fun events that I did, you know, being in Los Angeles, we're very close to all the TV and film studios. We did a group excursion to The Price is Right, uh, the game show that had been on for years and still is on. And while we were there, Bob Barker was still the host, so we were fortunate enough to have him um, in the prime in his prime uh, before he retired and it was a great experience and um, one of the most memorable parts was the fact that actually one of my classmates spun a dollar on the wheel made it to the final showcase showdown and won the showcase showdown and it was great to have you know a group of 30 of us students rushing the stage and congratulating him you won like a, a Dodge Ram truck and a vacation and all these other fun things and so that was a that was a great experience, and only one you could do if you're local in LA to be close to those uh, game shows and TV film studios. If you're considering a full-time MBA, it really is an opportunity for you to not have to work and devote the full schedule that you have to networking, to going to classes, to meeting your fellow students, to meeting those professors, and that really should be your full-time job. And that's how I approached my two years at UCLA Anderson. I said, this is my one chance to, to invest in uh, the, the experience of my classmates and invest in my own experience and get the most out of it, whether it's extracurricular activities that aren't necessarily in the classroom, um, whether it's internships, whether it's you know, putting your, um, your whole mind and body into your studies and trying to get the most out of it for those um, very elusive A's. Uh, especially for folks who are considering um, more quantitative careers such as banking and consulting, or whether it's um, trying to do a little exploration on your own and determining what inspires you, what types of business opportunities can maybe you pursue in an entrepreneurial way, uh, non-traditional in terms of not just following a set career, but maybe trying to pursue a passion project that could become uh, the next big thing in uh, the market. So those are all things that I think a full-time MBA opportunity offers to a potential student and and really um, to not give yourself the, the permission to really pursue all of these passion areas to um, get the most out of the experience of the, your two years there would be um, you know, a, an opportunity missed.